Poppin' T Squad. It's your girl Keisha, and I'm here with tonight's All T All Shay Love and Hip Hop New York, Season 9, Episode 6 Review. Told y'all I was gonna be looking cute for y'all. Okay, anywho, so Jewel's is stressing over his court case and Kim Bella. He getting a tattoo. He still don't want to accept the fact that his drug use is the reason why that nigga in trouble. Kim Bella is over there and tell him that little Jules found out from a kid in school about that nigga going to jail. He all like, well, you know, I, I really want him to learn like that. But, uh, you know, I'm going to talk to him later because, you know, I got these cheese in my mouth and I read cute. I can't really talk right yet, you know, but I'm going I'm to talk to him, Kim Bella, because I don't want him to really know that I'm going to jail like that and that my teeth don't really work. But I'm going to work it out. <laughs> so, uh, Joe is at his mama's house. He feel like all sin do is complain and he don't see her stepping up to the plate like he is. He want to marry her but think that she been acting hella crazy lately. And he don't really know how to deal with it. He tell his mama that she want to have sex all the time but he's too tired because he work all damn day. I mean the nigga do got like 50 million jobs. He got state of the culture. He got the podcast. He do live shows. He does interviews. Like he's all over the place. Like Joe is hot right now. He's hot in hip hop culture. So, she got to step up or somebody else going to come swoop in on that nigga. You know, he making money now. His um, New Year's Eve post was this time last year. I was out of a job because, you know, he had got fired from Complex News or whatever. He was like, I was out of a job and had a baby on the way. And now I got like four or five jobs and several more deals. Like, this nigga's out here doing it. Girl, you better get it up and get it together. We already know that he proposed to her and she said yes. So, hopefully they going to make this shit shake and they'll be able to work it out. So, uh, he said, you know, they just need to figure things out and talk. Naya Lee meets up with Rich to talk. She apologized to him about how they met. Um, and they talk about her getting into it with DJ Self at, you know, uh, Mariah Lynn's event. She wants, um, she wants basically just acknowledgement, not only from Self, but from the industry. He tells her not to act out because she may need Self one day. You know, never burn the bridge with people. Um, he offers to help her, but needs a favor. He wants her to help him with Sydney Star's look and sound. Um, I just want to know why she had the straps of her lace bodysuit hanging off her arms. Like, was it too little and she couldn't pull it up? Like, I did not understand what that look was about because it looked stupid. She agrees to help Sydney, and he tells her, well, she hurt. <laughs> we about to do this shit right now. So, Sydney sits down with her baby hairs, honey. And Sydney tells her that she was sorry for how she came at her. She said she felt like Naya looked at her like, what the fuck she doing here? And she thought it was because she was trans. You know, that's how people generally uh, react to her when they meet her for the first time. Um, Naya Lee apologized to her and says that it wasn't that, you know, and they toast and they agree to work with each other. So, at Joe and seeing how she fake pretending to be sad <laughs> for that little montage, she don't want to get out of bed and don't know she... Per got postpartum or depression or whatever the case it is so mariah lynn has dyed her her uh like a red burgundy ish color she has residential custody of her little sister iceland who is too cute so cute um the little girl is two years old her and john at the meet up to talk she tells him that her mom is back up in jail again and that she's gonna pursue full custody because not only is she raised in iceland but her two other siblings as well and her nephew Mariah do got a lot of shit going on. I feel sorry for that girl because she's so young, got so much responsibility. And there's so many families like that, you know, around the world where you got drug addicted parents or unfit parent. And the child ends up taking care of the younger sibling and putting their life on hold. It's just really a sad thing to watch. Mariah gets very emotional and the baby see her crying. And the little baby walk up and she said, you okay? Touched my heart. I was like, oh, what a... And Mariah was like, I'm okay. I'm all right. I promise. Um, Jonathan tells her that, you know, he lashed out at people, too, when he was on drugs, including Anais and Juju. And then she was like, hey, speaking of Anais, nigga, have you seen her? And so she shows a very scary, skinny, um, Anais. I did see that picture, and I was like, what is going on with sis? He said he been trying to reach out to her, but she won't answer. Joel surprised the kids by telling them he coming home. Alexis Sky is scared that Trey Way might not be in business because of this fed shit. Like, girl, you might as well just go ahead and put your music up on SoundCloud like you told Shoddy. So, 
Um, she just basically want to know, like, what the hell is going on with my career. She goes to see the dude Shadi, and he tells her to basically chill the fuck out and be patient. Sydney comes to the studio with Rich and Jacque to lay down track. She get in the studio, baby. She think that she is, like, the fifth member or the sixth member of Bone Thugs and Home. You can't tell sis shit. She start rapping, and it is so elementary. She is not prepared. Rich is pissed. She thinks she killed the baby. She thinks she did that, and he like, no, the hell you didn't. She immediately started crying and saying she want, you know, this dream really bad. And she and Naya, Naya Lee end up meeting afterwards, like another day. And she tells her what happened and raps the song for Naya. And me and Naya was looking like, okay, no, like you tried. <laughs> Naya tells her it wasn't the best, but you know, you could do better. Sydney says, you know, there's a lot about her that people don't know. She lied about having a sex change because she thought people wouldn't like her. She wants to have the surgery, though. She would have sex, though, with dudes without telling them that she still has a penis. But she says she don't do that type of stuff no more because, you know, people out here are dying behind it. And that's not cool, you know, to set somebody up like that and make them think that it's one thing when it's another. I always give people a choice. Um, Naya um, embraces her and just really wants to help her. Because she sees that she's vulnerable and she's very insecure. And she just needs people in her corner that's going to be there for her. So, Joel tells the kids that he's going to jail. They whining and crying and saying, you know, is God going to bring you back if we pray? It was very sad and an emotional thing to watch. Jonathan and I uh, and Rich meet up to talk. He apologizes to him for getting into it with him, getting in between him and Anais and in, in their business last season. He tells him that Anais needs help and shows Rich the picture of her. Rich um, tells him that Anais has been in and out of a mental facility for the last few months. And he like, what? Apparently her and Ruben been into it and she's he's been committing her. Um... And she has been in these mental facilities on like a, a 72 hour lockdown. Um, she hasn't been taking her medication. She's been talking about seeing UFOs and all this other crazy shit. Jonathan just started crying. I feel really bad because y'all know I love Anais. And I did not know that she suffered from, you know, mental illness. Like, that's crazy. Like, she's so funny and just so lighthearted. So I pray for her and I pray that, you know, she gets it under control and she takes her medication and goes to therapy and she gets the, you know, the tools to be able to handle this because mental health is not nothing to play with. So Rich tells him that he and Anais, John and Anais' relationship is very toxic. He, um, Jonathan wants to make things right with Anais, but Rich encourages him, encourages him just to give her a minute, let her get her shit together. Then y'all can try to, you know, work whatever y'all got going on out. So seeing is at the crib <clears throat> with her, her all over her head. I don't know if that was just to make the scene even more intense because they have call times. They know we're going to be shooting at this time, at this place be there to show up they already know what they're going to be talking about in these scenes so i'm feeling like she had her looking like that just to really show that she going through something because i really didn't understand why she was on camera with her hair like that so she wants to spend family time with joe of course gotta work he gotta go to the city she get mad and he's shocked that she's you know straight up mad that he gotta go they sit down and talk and she tells him she's not happy with their relationship and he's neglecting her and he says that you know his job is basically 24 7 he don't have time to be you know going back and forth over the same subject she all in his face like good for you nigga. you got a job um i really feel like a part of um seeing problem is she don't got nothing going on in her life she just at home with that baby i think she's low-key a little bit jealous and afraid of joe's career because he's blowing up where joe is now is where was, was not where joe was when they got with each other i feel like she's lost she's lonely and she's suffering from postpartum i really feel like that's what's going on with her so he tells her that for the past year and a half she hasn't been the person he met and he's trying to figure out if it's depression or postpartum but she don't talk to him about shit she says she can't talk to him because he's dismissive and starts to cry she say he don't make her feel important he says he's not gonna listen when she gets upset over tiny shit and he's working she admits that she's depressed and he doesn't see it because all he does is work Joe say, are you worried about me seeing the depression or are you worried about doing something about the depression? She says she ain't, you know, scared to do something about it, but he's still being neglectful and she's still not happy. And Joe says, you know, I'm fine if me and you break up and you're not depressed. Like, if you're not depressed and we break up, then it is what it is. And he's like, I gotta go. And she like, shit, go. And she pick up her baby and that's that. I think Joe is 
feeling some type of way because she ain't been keeping out. Like you ain't you don't do shit. You in the house every day. I got you a nanny because he did say he got her a nanny. Like I got you a nanny. You got help with the baby. You sitting on your ass every day. You ain't cleaning up. They she don't cook because they got a chef. I follow that nigga. They got a chef that come in and cook for them. So really, what are you doing? Like what are you doing? Like you can work on other things if you really want to work on other things. Um, I did see that she's working on new music. You know, she can sing. So, she will have a single coming out soon. So, um, I think that was his problem. I think that, you know, like I said, with her, she's suffering from postpartum or depression. And she's feeling like she's lost and really don't know what she want to do with herself. And she got to figure that out. And she can't blame that on Joe. Joe can't be the end-all, be-all for her. You know, he got his shit and he, you know gone and ran with it he knows his purpose he knows what he want to do with himself and seeing got to figure out what she wants to do with her life so um overall i give tonight's episode of love and hip-hop new york a d minus it was very boring i'm very happy that they're doing true authentic stories it's something that we've all been asking for from the beginning of time but it's lackluster and it's boring as fuck like we want the real life stories but it needs to be more drama there i know a lot of you all complained about the ratchet tree and the fake storylines or whatever i don't like the fake storylines but i do like the ratchet i'm sorry i do like the ratchet i do i do i do and that is what is missing from this season and i need it back because this episode was sad and boring like i can't deal with all these sad ass stories like everybody has sad stories there's nothing salacious there's nothing like ooh bitch like we need the salaciousness and this shit is just boring so i don't know mona you need to cook it up again for next season because i'm not feeling this we need a mixture of both so let's talk down below make sure to thumbs up this video like and subscribe hit that notification bell button make sure you guys check out my top 10 book video movie television shows and album videos they're up right now new episode of spill the tea is up as well as my married to medicine reunion part two review and my real housewives of atlanta review i love you guys see you later bye